So uh, good evening, everyone here, and welcome to Advanced Shell webinar series. Myself, Dr. Lippi, Vice President of Advanced Shell Group. So today, what I'm speaking about. So here it goes. So advances towards diabetes cure with stem cell technology. So just going to the introduction first. So we, you, you can see the slides about 500 million people diabetic age from 20 years to 80 years worldwide. And India alone is 77 million and it's growing faster. And expecting to be reached 700 million by 2045. I mean, another next to 15 years. And in what about the type 1 diabetes? In the children and persons of 0 to 19 years old with type 1 diabetes, and about 1 million people are there. So it's a good number, you can see. And according to the CDCs, now it is getting global pandemic. People are living with the diabetes. So we say we have very best healthcare system. So where we are, why this number is increasing? The question arises, how we developed diabetes? This is a separate uh, field of research, but I'm uh, somewhat taking this in this seminar as well. So fundamentally, hello. A any comments I'm getting? Um, any comments? Lives if you're calling me on Twitter, the discussion was really about doubt theory because when the bank index in the US uh, made a new low, then we did not see a similar new low in the S&P or the NASDAQ, which is basically what we call as an intermarket divergence, a classic doubt theory, non-confirmation of a downtrend. Hello, am I audible? And the upgrade is starting. So present healthcare system design, never designed to be, this is my, our comment. I mean, you can see that this number is increasing. So it looks like, our healthcare system never designed to cure chronic diseases, especially diabetes, because we are increased up to 700 million in the next 20 years. So by the best, it do manage or suppress the symptoms. So <clears throat> healthcare rewarded for the management of the diabetes, for never for the prevention or cure, because you can see the Anti-diabetic drug, metformin or GLP is hardly work 30%. And current invention is, is to suppress the highly glycated hemoglobin. So diabetes is not, not a single year. I mean, you say it's, it's a 15 years or 15, 20 years to, to get this HB1C goes up. So initially it will first goes insulin first and then glucose and then HB1C. So there is a link that is in the chronic inflammation and type two diabetes. So why we need a cell-based therapy or stem cell-based therapy in diabetes? Because we have a external hypoglycemic agent like insulin, which control the high blood, but it, can, uh, but it generally not mimic the secretion of what we are having in the endogenous. So sometimes it causes hyperglycemia. And also other option for this is pancreas or islet transplant, which is quickly control the hyperglycemia, but we need a exogenous, also the eliminate the need of insulin supplementation, but, we need a donor and lifelong suppression. So that's why, and also the cost effectiveness, that is the insulin prices go up. You can see here my slide, well, two to 
increase in 2002 to 2030 and and also increase annual increase in 14% from 2012 to 2018 so that's that's the reason we need the stem cell based therapy because if omit the donor limitation of donor equity high risk pancreas transplant and also uh, cost effective as compared to exogenous insulin supply. And also we are made up of cells, not drugs. And in the beginning, there is the stem cell that is the origin of life. So we, that's why we focus more on the cells rather than on drugs. So this is a general idea about the, what are stem cell, everybody, I yes know about it it's the fundamental cells of every organ and it has two properties uh, main that is self renewal and plasticity real renewal it can replicate and plastic can be differentiated in different types of cells and <clears throat> So how about the human uh, embryo genesis? That is, everybody knows that it starts from the, uh, from sperm, from a gigot. That is, there is a fertilization between sperm and egg and initial eight weeks is the important for, uh, you say, development. How, I mean, different um, from single cell to uh, multi-level body plan so and you can see and uh first 12 to 24 hours after diagnosis is in, after rapid cell division and here totipotent cells you can say in vitro fertilization there is stage of totipotent cells day three and day six is inner cell mother blastocyst and then we pull out these cells, we call it uh, progenitor stem cells. Some other uh, type of cell cell, depending upon the origin, like embryonic, that is from the embryos, adult tissue, that is from the public called water jelly or uh, other organ specific stem cells. And according to the differentiation, it is different kind of uh, stem cells that put totipotent stem cell, pluripotent, multipotent, or unipotent stem cells. So you must know about the <clears throat> what are the different between totipotent, pluripotent, and multipotent stem cells. Totipotent is a uh, four cell embryo, while pluripotent is what I showed you in during the embryogenesis. There's a blastocyst and inner cell ma. This is that stage is pluripotent stem cell, and we cultured those cells also. And another is multipotent stem cell that is from the special tissues, like you can say from the and differentiate into dif uh, different kinds of cells. And it is organ specific. So um, one more important thing is here, induced pluripotent stem. I think everybody heard about the Yamanaka in 2000, got the Nobel Prize for this, and which can be any cells from the body can be transformed into the embryonic stem cell like feature and then into the special. Stem cell. This, this is what induced protein. Uh, lots of study has been done on related as well, xenofree as well, and a hypoxic. This depends upon the condition how you grow and culture these stem cells. <clears throat> so now we start with the uh, we uh, talk about about the beta cell transplant therapy. 
and in early 2000 and how it, uh, human pluripotent stem cell come to the picture later on these thymus cells and now in advanced cells we are working on exosomes so beta cell replacement therapy replacement therapy practically uh, it is uh, we have a fixed protocol and i was also there in this clinical trial in 2000 in uh, city of hope medical center in us and we uh, this therapy this protocol we have to generate, we have to generate the beta cells and then inject it into the portal vein. And this is protocol is was successful somewhat. And also those patients who was uh, really suffering from the dangerous hypoglycemic patients and who developed the severe complication. So we treated very well those patients and 70% of patients these are uh, they not require these uh, insulin injection for two years, but however, after five years, they again depend on the uh, insulin exogenous exogen supply. Even we get uh, two or three eyelid implants. But the, there is a limitation for this uh, beta cell transplant because we need an adequate number of eyelids to achieve the glycemic level from, and also we have to get it from the cadaveric pancreas. And another drawback is the uh, necessary of immunosuppression for uh, any reactions in the body. Now this uh, stem cell based technology uh, fall from there. We see already a beta cell that is from the a cadaveric pancreas, we isolate the beta cell and infuse in the patient. Here also I talk about the human pluripotent stem cell. And this is, we generate a beta cell from the human pluripotent stem cells. And then in a protective device, I will show you a little later on this, the other companies working on it, so immunoprotective device and put in subcutaneous and there's a release of the insulin and that's helping into the uh, treatment of type one diabetes. Other is the, we culture the beta cell and we have the multi uh, millions of beta cells. And in this lab, uh, very pioneer research by Sir Douglas Melton lab in Howard, he was working uh, on that and still he's looking for the cure for this technology. So here now come about the human pluripotent stem cells and human pluripotent stem cells either is embryonic or I told you induced pluripotence and maybe from the somatic cell to embryonic condition by reprogramming. And this you, because they have a good technology, this can be generate beta cell and um, and can differentiate to other cell type as well. Only issue is in this case is that we need a mature beta cell which is function and release uh, monohormone insulin. That means insulin secreting cells. This is very uh, amazing, challenging in this field. So. <clears throat> So I have also worked on fibrotin cells and long back during the beta death transplant to grow these uh, stem cells from human pluripotent to beta cell and making it mature. mature. Maturity is very important to secrete the insulin. So it's a very challenging <clears throat> in, uh, for this therapy. So, this hemoglobin uh, stem cell derived from inner cell mass, what I have shown you during the embryogenesis, we took out the cells and we can culture those cells. And those are human pluripotent cells and differentiated in a specific protocol and make it mature and glucose responsive. And this can be transplanted. How about the insulin requirement when these therapy has done? So for follow up for, uh, different periods, especially 12 months. And about um, here with this uh, MSC, vision camel stem cell therapy, 
their dependency uh, will be reduced by 51%. And overall gradual decrease in the exogenous supply of the insulin when uh, stem cell therapy was done. And so far in these all clinical trials, adverse effect, no obvious adverse reaction has been found, not there uh, any tumor formation or chronic infections. I especially highlighted this mesenchymal stem cell therapy because we have done lots of study on that for, um, for these uh, stem cells application in different indications. So here we can see the uh, mesenchymal stem cell bells therapy and in going infusion with the hematopoietic stem cell in type 1 diabetes, especially in type 1 diabetes, in, there is an increase in the peptide C level as conventional to do insulin therapy. And this is their remarkable achievement so far in the clinical trial, in, especially for type 1 diabetes. So coming to the type 2 diabetes, clinical trial outcomes and review. So, uh, so far, uh, study in 386 patients and seven trials, which have shown significant increase in the C-peptide. And, and however, the efficacy of bone marrow mononuclear cell therapy is uh, also decreased in the C-peptide level. In case of uh, HPNC, in nine trials, there is a significant reduction of the after stem cell therapy in this mesenchymal stem cell group therapy. And uh, so this study showing that mesenchymal stem cell therapy has a effective therapy for type two diabetes. So how about the insulin requirement in those trials? So there is a, they have, uh, shown that about there is a significant reduction in exogenous insulin requirement with 12 months follow-up in the mesenchymal stem cell therapy group, while other uh, therapy like bone marrow mononuclear therapy, bone marrow hepatopoietic stem cell therapy also showing significant reduction. So, so different types of stem cell therapy, they are showing the insulin requirement, exogenous insulin requirement, significant decrease among the patients doing this after the stem cell therapies. Fasting, uh, next is the important is to see after the therapy of fasting glucose, plasma glucose, and in the mesenchymal stem cell group therapy, about 63 patients, there is a significant improvement in the level by the bone marrow mononuclear cell have no significant effects on these patients. So, so far the adverse event using the mesenchymal stem cells is very mild or uh, some having, uh, I mean, you say mild or moderate fever after therapy, but no serious adverse events after follow up with one year. So here you see the um, clinical trial with the history of uh, about 10 to 14 years diabetic patient. They have taken as an inclusion criteria, 10 is the minimum, 10 years, and their uh, therapy is mesenchymal stem cell therapy and bone marrow mononuclear therapy. So, MSC, I mean, mesenchymal stem cell based clinical trial is focused on the hypothesis that it's improved the islet health and survival. That is the, for regeneration and its survival. It's very important for uh, this treatment. And also because it secretes, has a paracrine effect. As everybody knows, mesenchymal stem cell has a paracrine effect, secreting different growth factors, modulation of extracellular matrix, and also reduce the uh, reactive oxygen species, thus help in the, using the apoptosis or death of the islets 
in um, in this um, I mean in, in this indication and also it modulate the immune system like it inhibit the T cell proliferation and upregulate the T regulatory T cells and balance the TH TH2 immune balance in the organ and thus help into uh, I mean you say death of uh, preventing the death of the islet. So all these clinical trials so far, their uh, primary aid point is the uh, reduction of insulin requirement. And so far we have found that 50% was there in the insulin reduction after this therapy, especially in the mesenchymal stem cell therapy. And also the insulin requirement of, of a 12 months follow-up is reduced and significant reduced. And here you see um, also the significant increase in the C-peptide level also. And uh, also because uh, insulin um, sensitivity is also very important for the uh, diabetic treatment. So it also increased with the expression of other GLP-1, other gene expression in those group. Another important thing is uh, in this treatment or you say uh, stem cell therapy or you say uh, designing any therapy or infusion of any therapy, homing of stem cell is in pancreas is very important. So because it's uh, to, uh, because it's, I told you about this, how the stem cell works, mechanism of action like paracrine effect. So it must be important that the, stem cells should reside in these organs so we can achieve the maximum therapeutic efficacy in these patients. So there are different targets so far in the clinical trial and we have also used that is first cell reinfused in the superior you can here I circle with the yellow circle here you can see the superior pancreatinian artery so we enter atrical injections of this. Another is splenic artery. And another, uh, third one is the simple IV injections, infusion. So uh, this is very important also the route of ad administration. So um, cell delivery through intraatrial route is very important because maximum homing is there of the stem cells with this route, it, uh, depending uh, as compared to splenic artery and the uh, IV injections. So already study has been done by uh, our, um, also the Indian um, scenario by Dr. Vansali, I think he's from PGI MAR, and he studied from different route procedure, how it is, which one is more effective. So you can, also seen the published article for this. And definitely those targeted routes showed a significant reduction of insulin at the end of six months while increasing, while other compared with the intravenous uh, supply of these uh, stem cells. And also they found a 50% reduction in insulin dose. So this was really I mean, they're achieving the uh, maximum efficacy of this stem cell infusion with this uh, uh, homing of the stem cell pancreas with the target infusion of stem cells. So now I already mentioned here one word about the exosomes, so mesenchymal stem cells from pancreatic uh, islet cells, pro uh, progenital cells, pluripotent stem cells, mesenchymal stem cell now, Next is the uh, stem cell derived other technology like exosomes. So you can see how involved this video can help you understand what are those exosomes. These are
I think I'm running eight. So uh, basically, these are consider our non-coding RNA, lipid, and proteins. That is help in cell to cell communication. It's very important to uh, of its paracrine effect. And advanced cell is uh, can help you to. I mean, it's a have done this. I think in uh, in India to characterize how to generate, how to harvest exosome from the stem cells in the uh, mass scale. So. Uh, these exosomes are extra vesic uh, extracellular vesicles, is having non-coding RNA already mentioned. And also its is size is about 30 to 100 nanometers with the lipids and the different proteins. And it contains uh, more than 300 more growth factors as, as compared to stem cells. So this is very big things next to the stem cells is a history of exosome first isolated in 1981 by Judge and John Stone. This is the different uh, isolation procedure of exosomes. This is very also important. And the advanced cell group have generalized the exosome production in our lab. And one study also already started in clinical trial exosome with type one diabetes because it has anti-inflammatory effects. And just this pantry, uh, this study is still going on. So it has two action, you know, immunomodulatory and regenerative effects to overcome the diabetes and, and its uh, complications with having growth factors, high vascularization and eugenesis and reduced inflammation as well. So there's some challenges also for this exosome technology, the manufacturing and the efficient extraction of exosomes. And also the, because it's uh, heterogeneous in nature. So it is very important to standardize the exosome production in a lab and make it iterabilic. Uh, just short, because this is diabetes, it's very important. मुद्दा तो नहीं है मुद्दा का है कि आता सग बंद पड़ता ना नहीं का नहीं नहीं ठीक है ना मनोन मग भी तुम्हारा लाइट जो पर धोते तो पर क्या बोलो उसने ना ना अतः ऐसा भरोसा नहीं ना लाइट सा अन्य ये उन्हें मध्य आशा जो था पर ना क्या जाला से लाइट तरते खालचे ते बॉक्स से लाइट दिस्ता तो हेलो एवरीवन Sorry for uh, the technical error. So we resume uh, just a five, 10 minutes because it's very short time. So it, I'm talking about the insulin resistant and type two diabetes because it's very important and we have developed this insulin resistance and due uh, in the type two diabetes because our cells are uh, resistant to take the insulin. So why the reason? Because it's one of the diets in the diet. So, Diet is also a very important role. We have to be very particular about this 
One, because none of the clinical trials show any uh, diet requirement, I mean, for this therapy. So, so, so there is a science behind it as is the microbiome science in the insulin resistance and type two diabetes, because uh, <clears throat> we have the have the lots of microbes in our gut. They play a very important role um, during what we eat and their what they produce as a metabolite. So. When you eat a food, different kind of food, so sometimes lipopolysaccharide production is high, oxalic uric acid production is very high, some that having deficiency of vitamin D, less butyrate productions, and having less antioxidants. So this is a factors which make your cell insulin resistant. Um, I show you a little bit about the, this how cell signaling works in your cellular level when you eat food and generation of some of the metabolite like lipopolysaccharides or and others uh, like uh, oxalic acids. They internally uh, induce the signaling that we call as TR, TLR toll right receptor two, which increase the JNK pathway. This is the signaling cell signaling um, pathway inside the cellular uh, level. And this will increase the insulin resistance in your muscle, liver, uh, this, in this, during this, this uh, chronic illness. So it's very important what you are eating uh, and you have to take care of your diet during the treatment as well. So now coming to the summary. So diabetes having this uh, chronic metabolite disease with high morbidity and mortality and potential, there is a potential for embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem, which will produce a mature insulin producing beta cells, which can restore the beta cell mass in the pancreas. Many companies working on it, like Wireside, Vetex Pharmaceutical, to get the, uh, this pluripotent stem cell to be effective therapy for type one diabetes. We have also studied the efficacy and safety using chemical stem cells for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Among those is type 2 diabetes is uh, have showing the more effective with the stem mesenchymal stem cell therapy. In type 2 diabetes, the uh, HP1C and insulin requirement decreases significantly after this transplant as compared to bone nuclear, bone marrow mononuclear cells. And Stem cell therapy is relatively safe and effective so far. As we show this, our uh, this clinical trial, what we have, uh, these uh, clinical trials was by going on, and also the the clinical trial data show that bone marrow are superior than MSC in the case of type one diabetes. That is, we can see from different trials so far. While in type two diabetes, mesenchymal stem cells show favorable therapeutic effects. So, take the message: improvement in C level, I mean C peptide level, H B N C level, and daily exogenous insulin requirements is there after stem cell therapy is safe and effective intervention in a selective individual that is an inclusion criteria to to for this therapy and type 1 diabetes so far we see the bone marrow uh, hematopoietic stem cell is a better option than mesenchymal but type 2 is a mesenchymal therapy is more significant uh, role in this uh, in this type 2 diabetes treatment we have also developed the technology for other stem cell fat stem cells and cell-to-cell -cell communicator that we show you exosome stem cell as a clinical grade. So any collaboration who wants to study on this, we can do. Uh, we can collaborate with you also for the diabetic treatment. So thank you so far. Um, so at the end, I can say we are made up of. We are not made up of drugs, but definitely made up of cells. So keeping in this mind are really positive about the stem cell therapy or technology you can say for in the diabetes cure. 
because it's a real cure or reversal, you say it's not the, just the management. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I can take now. Yes, please. Okay, I have a question. Um, very nice presentation. Uh, my question is, how do you expand the cells and how do you check the cell quality after expansion? Uh, stem cell, if suppose in case of mesen camel stem cell, we have, we have different uh, quality control parameters. First, the viability, we need to check the different, I um, mean, the characterization of stem cell is very important, whether your cells are actual, your cells or not, like hematopoietic CD34. If mesenchymal, you have a separate set of CD markers study, we have to see that. And also study the, some, um, uh, you say, um, clinical efficiency test, like you say, um, a colony forming test before because a single cell, how can multiply and replicate, we have to see, you can see from those cells, these having the quality of those, then we only pass that uh, uh, cells are real stem cells of particular what of interest. So every stem cell, the schematopoidic have different set of parameters, mesenchymal having different set of parameters, and also we are checking the microbial contamination or endotoxin level because it's culture cells. So we have to check all those parameters before uh, actual, we can say that we are uh, a clinical grade, you mean uh, stem cells. And I, I imagine you, you need uh, more than five times stem to the seven for, for injection. Yes, we are uh, generally we two to four million cell per kg weight for him uh, mesen camel stem cell for hematopoietic little more than uh, that. So this is the basic uh, established uh, literature, or also yeah. we have done study on that those purpose. So this is the more effective one: two to four cells per kg weight. And more cells are better. So I told you for our, um, and all the established clinical trial, so type one diabetes, this is always with the hematopoietic stem cells along with the infusion with mesenchymal. But type two diabetes, mesenchymal stem cell is more effective than hematopoietic stem cells. And also root of infusion matters, how you're infusing the cells. I told you that uh, homing of the stem cells is very important in the pancreas to remain there to uh, uh, create the correct uh, environment in the pancreas, like immune tolerance, immune reaction to subside. So it's homing is important. So root of administration of stem cell in pancreas is important. So I told you one is uh, donor uh, arterial injection is better than others planning or I'll uh, say intravenous injections. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last uh, is quick question. How do you grow the cells in 2D? 2D, 2D okay. cell with the bigger of us, we have a 2D, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I think you have, have one question. You have yeah. one question in the, in the chat. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, volunteer for clinical chat. We are all previous small study we are doing. So we have to catch with the big hospital for time for this uh, volunteer. But if anything, you can uh, write to us. We'll think about, I mean, we can take care of that. Where, where you are based on? We are based in Delhi, India, uh, New Delhi. Very nice. 
do you do you need any uh cell expansion you 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 require more cells or you're okay with the production you have right now uh we are working because we are every um uh, we are every time every year we are because jet technology is changing so we always look for better option and economical options so so far we are every every time if something coming new so we definitely uh work on it and validate the system if it workable doable definitely we opt for that very very interesting Any more questions if you are uh, for any treatment regarding or if you need any collaboration, something you want to do with us or study or something? Yes, I will request uh, the sales guy in my company to contact you. Sure, sure. Most definitely. If you have any question, maybe in future or something, you can write to us in for the root advanced cell group.com. Most welcome for that. We are happy to reply to those questions or queries. Good evening, so, ma'am. Thank you. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. Are you treating uh, by stem cells now or still it is in clinical trial stage? So still it is clinical trial stage because it's still it is a long way to go for getting these those approval from the FDA from the Indian government so uh, it's 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 still in clinical trial but I show you different worldwide clinical trial and in that case uh, I would like to volunteer trust a... that stem cell can be. Yeah, you sir. If you report. write to us and show me your uh, reports, we'll 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 reply on that. I would like to volunteer for a clinical trial. Is it possible? So you, we have to see your report first, sir. Uh, so you can send to send it to us. We'll see and reply to you. Okay. What reports do you need? All the your blood report and any history of other complications. Experience you have must be, and the blood cost level test. If you have any other complication, the heart issues or kidney, and then you also need to send it to us. Okay, where are the actually trials going on in India now? Trial big trials going on with the other other companies. I guess uh, we let you. By email. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, if you have any question, you can email to us. Uh, we are happy to reply for that. So, thank you very much.